Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, bombshell. CFTC charges BitMEX with illegally operating derivatives exchange. This is a big story. It has huge repercussions, potentially. What is more telling is that the people up at the top are going to get off with basically nothing, and I'll explain in detail. Also, Winklevoss Twins Crypto Exchange now allows users to withdraw Zcash confidentially. This is pretty amazing because security coins were on their way out, but with this, looks like we're going in the opposite direction. Also, a crypto venture capitalist thinks Ethereum will hit a one trillion market cap, but it's going to have competitors, and I can tell you which ones they are. Venezuela's President Maduro says that he's going to bypass sanctions with cryptocurrency. So the question really is, is this a good point for cryptocurrency or actually a bad point? And finally, we'll go over a Q of the day where we're taking a look at what could potentially be another scam. And why it's important that you know about it now so you don't fall victim. So before we get into all that, which is a ton of stuff, let's go over what's going on in today's market. So it is October 1st. It's pretty late, almost 5 p.m. Getting done late because a lot of things are going on. But uh, here's what we got. Bitcoin down 1% and not surprising with the news. How far is it going to tumble? We'll get to that in a second. Ethereum down 1.8 at 352. I expect it to fall farther. Tether's tether. Nobody cares. XRP, 23 cents. Watch out. Bitcoin cash, 0.7 down a little bit i mean everything's gonna be down that's just how it is so i'm not even gonna go over it it was just down 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 to down 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 oh hey look makers up 1.9 anyhow i mean it really doesn't matter so if you're new to this space welcome uh great day to pick to uh, start off <laughs> but uh here's what i'm gonna tell you it doesn't matter what happens now fundamentally nothing has changed there has been no hacks there has been no issues with source code. There has been no uh, types of issues with breakdowns in the structure or deals falling through majorly. Uh, we just have what is, I think, is a hiccup and actually a good thing for the space, which is BitMEX is going to get closed down. I was never a fan of levered trading. I think you, uh, we all know that if you've listened to the uh, show any length of time. And uh, I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad it's going to go away. So what exactly is happening? Well, let's jump right in. So here we are. So BitMEX. And it was always amazing to me how it was clearly stated that you, if you're a U.S. resident, you could not trade on BitMEX. But, you know, with VPNs and whatever else was going on, people were just signing up. And, uh, of course, these guys knew. And they were le doing leverage trading. And there was a lot of shenanigans. I just... I never got a good feeling about it. I think people lost a lot of money. And I think they're the biggest shills out there. So, I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, different things about people losing money, I think BitMEX is uh, <laughs> top of my list. So what's going on here? So the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or CFTC, has charged BitMEX derivatives exchange with operating an unregistered trading platform and violating anti-money laundering regulations, or AML. Individual charges include Arthur Hayes, publicly known as the CEO of BitMEX, as well as Ben Dello and Samuel Reed. The CFTC alleges that these individuals are owners and operators of BitMEX through a maze of corporate entities. And these include HDR Global Trading, uh, 100X Holding, ABS Global Trading Limited, Shine Effort Inc. Limited, and HDR Global Services, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. So here's the thing about, about corporations. It's pretty normal to actually have multiple because you have to minimize your liabilities. You have to uh, minimize the chances of being sued. You should have a holding company. You should have an S-Corp, C-Corp, or however you want to incorporate it, but different entities so you can mitigate the risks. And uh, if you don't do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. So, I mean, I can understand that that part of the whole thing, but I mean, that is a lot of, <laughs> that is a lot of, uh, of corporations and, and how they all separated it. And of course, uh, with all those corporations, there's going to be different heads of that. So yes, the, it might be a maze, but um, you know, in all honesty, a lot of companies, I mean, yeah, my business is included. Uh, they have to, you know, have different entities around it to minimize risk. Anyhow, which I guess really didn't help them. So the commission believes that BitMEX has offered illegal leverage trading services to traders to the tune of, get this, one trillion in national value since its inception in 2014. So here's the thing. Do you think that that one trillion dollars was a lot of traders who hit it big? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I just laugh at that right now because that is a ridiculous statement. Um, a lot of traders got wrecked. A lot of people got wrecked. A lot of people lost a lot of money. And, um, you know, I've always said the same thing. If you want to trade, go ahead and trade. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's okay if you're going to put a small percentage. But if you are, and really what it is, I, I know gamblers. I lived in Vegas for years and it was always the same thing. I'm like, hey, Pete, how's it going? 
Yeah, pretty good, Rob. So what happened last night? Oh, man, I had a huge hand. Oh, what what was it? I He's like, I hit five grand. Well, great, Pete. Well, how are you doing for the year? Oh, I'm down 30. I'm down 30 Gs, but I mean, five is pretty good for the night. Yeah, it's the same thing with, you know, leverage trading. Again, you can do whatever trading that you want to. And uh, as long as it's not like 100% of your portfolio, I think that's just crazy. But, but again, uh, these guys really screwed over a lot of people. And um, that's part of the reason why there's these regulations in place. I know people are going to say, well, it's decentralized and people do whichever you want to. Yes, that's true. That is, that is the great thing about decentralization. You can do whatever you want to, and especially with these exchanges. But you see the repercussions, and uh, there's going to be a huge fallout. And that could affect, actually, your bottom line if you're just an investor, just for a bit. I'll get to that in a second. In addition to civil charges, the U.S. Attorney for the District of New York indicted Hayes, Dello, Reed, and Gregory Dwyer, Bitmax's head of business development, for violating conspir and some conspiring to violate the Bank Secrecy Act, or BSA. If Now, here's the crazy part. If convicted... That's a big if. The executives could face a whopping five years in prison and a uh, massive quarter of a million fine. So this is the same thing with banks. Uh, we saw the um, different things that were going on with money laundering, with uh, JP Morgan, HSBC, and Deutsche Bank, which happened, what, a week or two weeks ago. And, of course, they're going to pay billions of dollars. But guess what? I mean, they made $2 trillion, so that's just the cost of business. So here again, we have a prime example of big money who is going to really get bailed out. If they serve any time, <laughs> which I do not think that's going to happen, it's going to be in a very minimum security prison, if, and that's a big if. And this, I mean, the penalty could be a whopping quarter of a million dollars, but I mean, I think you're laughing yourself. Just going to yourself, just thinking to yourself, wow, you made a trillion, you only had to pay a quarter of a million? What's that? It's a good deal. Works out pretty well for you, not so much for the rest of us. Anyhow, according to FBI Assistant Director William Sweeney, one defendant went as far as to brag that the company incorporated in jurisdiction outside the U.S. Uh, because to brag outside of there would cost them just a coconut, <laughs> which is pretty ballsy. A statement by the Department of Justice reveals that Reed, BitMEX's CTO, was arrested on Thursday in Massachusetts. Hayes, Dello, and Dwyer remain at large. And BitMEX's terms of service explicitly prohibit residents of the U.S., certain provinces in Canada, China, and a host of other countries from using the exchange, which they did not. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I have an anonymous source, and I uh, will not tell you her or his name, but that person confidentially told me, uh, Hayes doesn't care. Hayes doesn't care. He's already made his millions, his 80, 100 million dollars, whatever else it is. And he already made plans to never come back to the United States or leave the United States and never come back, uh, whichever one it is. And uh, he knew it was coming and uh, he's gone. He's gone uh, if he's smart. He's, he's, he's out of here and he's not coming back. So uh, if that remains to be true, I mean, maybe it's true. Uh, but I do think that someone who was as smart as Hayes would probably plan for this day because it only makes sense, right? And that is just that part of it. So again, there's different rules for people with a ton of money, and that's just how it goes. Now, on the flip side of that is there might be a dip. We, I mean, 1% is not a big, huge dip to me. I mean, for us, it's not a big deal, right? For traditional finance, that's huge, 1% to 3%. Oh, my God. But it's not. I mean, for us, 10%, 20%, you're like, well, that's just, that's just a Thursday. So if it does have a dip, here's my recommendation. For myself, I can't give a, a financial advice. Obviously, I'm not a I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm gonna buy, buy, buy because uh, nothing has changed. Bitcoin hasn't been hacked. There hasn't been a major deal that, that that's uh, that's uh, come through. The government hasn't come down and said we're cracking down. We're gonna eliminate the internet plus Bitcoin, which is ridiculous. Can't do that. Nothing has changed. So it's just this little part with this exchange. And even if there are Bitcoin that are uh, caught up in this whole thing and people lose their Bitcoin because it is um, confiscated, then that's money out of circulation, in, in my opinion. I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, Tim Draper can go pick up more Bitcoin at a uh, government seizure like he did in 2014 when he bought a bunch of uh, Bitcoin from the U.S. Marshals. So again, um, it's, it's going to be a bump, potentially, maybe not. I don't know. That's what potentially could happen. On the flip side of that, if there is no dip, like a big dip, like 5%, 10%, then that is signaling enormous strength for Bitcoin. If this would have happened in 2017, we would have heard these, these types of stories. It would have been a huge, huge waves. And it wouldn't have been 1% over the last, because this was like three hours ago that I heard about this four hours ago. It happened today. Today's Thursday. So if you have something like this and it happened in 2017, we would have saw, seen a huge, massive drop, but we haven't. So what does that say? 
potentially, uh, this is great news for Bitcoin. This is great news for cryptocurrency. This is great news for digital assets because we are showing that we are stronger than one weak link that is out there called BitMEX. And that's all I can say. So uh, lastly, I, well, I will say one thing. I I'm glad I dollar cost average. I don't just, you know, uh, fall into positions where I'm pretty much broke. Uh, I've got reserves on the side for days just like this. And that's why I'm always saying don't FOMO in. I mean, and if you're going to FOMO in, don't FOMO in with all your money. FOMO in with like 20 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever you can afford. Have some money on the sidelines for crazy days like this because that's what we're into. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, and these are going to go fast because I, I spent a lot of time on that on that first article because it is the big news. But uh, this one right here, um, Winklevoss Twins Crypto Exchange, Gemini, you're going to be able to withdraw Zcash confidentially. And this is a big it's a big thing to me because I thought that privacy coins were going out the window. But here's the thing. I'm not going to read uh, the rest of this. This just happened a couple of days ago. There's two big things. Gemini was able to offer confidential Zcash withdrawals after receiving approval from the New York State Department of Financial Services or NYDFS. So they did it the right way. They went through the proper channels, did all the hard work, and now they get to pay the, you know, here's the payoff. They actually get to do it legally. So before that, you could buy Zcash and you could send Zcash, but it had to be pretty much transparent and out in the open. However, now you can use private Zcash addresses. Uh, they can hide the sender, receiver, and also the transaction amounts, meaning that Gemini customers can now transfer their Zcash to shielded addresses. Now, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with the whole uh, privacy coins, actually Upbit and OKX, as well as uh, Coinbase in the UK, they had slashed away all Zcash and they had gotten rid of some other privacy coins. So now it looks like there is a thing going in reverse. And real quick, this is from the Gemini, the official blog post where they talk about it right here. So just so it says, you can protect your identity as well as the size of your transactions. So with private, totally private transactions, you have your Z address to another Z address. That's totally private. Right now, it's just T address to a T address. So basically open source, open types of accounts. But there is one little wrinkle. And that is that when you take your fiat money and you put it in Gemini, that gets recorded. When you transfer the fiat into Zcash, that gets recorded. However, whatever you do with that Zcash, whoever you send it to and the amount is totally shielded. So just so you know, if you're going to do that, that's on you. If you send it to somebody else, whoever that is, then no one's going to know. So that's all I'll say about that. This is a big win for privacy coins. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up. VC thinks that uh, Ethereum will hit a trillion, but it's going to have competitors. So who do you think that is? So real quick, this is from Crypto Slate. And, this, and the one that they're talking about is uh, Chris Bernsky. He's a partner at uh, Placeholder Capital. I think they got like a couple hundred million dollars asset center management. And you have to understand, because they're in a cryptocurrency, they probably hold a ton of Ethereum. So of course, Chris is going to say, hey, I think it's going to go to a trillion. Of course, I say the same thing. I think that Ethereum is going to go to a trillion. And people are like, what? That's ridiculous. How can it go to a trillion? Look, everything is built on Ethereum right now. There are so many ERC-20 tokens. DeFi is essentially being built on Ethereum. There are problems with Ethereum, which we know about, right? Slow transactions per second are awful. You have the gas fees, which are just outrageously high. This is not sustainable. We know that. That's why Ethereum 2.0 is going to come into, come into play. However, Ethereum 2.0 is going to happen over two years. So is that fast enough? I'm not sure. And it ain't looking good. But there's a lot of different people out, not a lot of different projects out there that can definitely take over. This is why as far as smart contracts, I've invested into Tezos, EOS, Cardano, and then who knows what's going on with XRP and this uh, uh, Spark or Flare drop or airdrop that's coming up. They're going to have smart contract functionality and maybe they'll start building things as far as DeFi goes. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm trying to hedge my bet because guess what? I don't know if Ethereum can actually make it because it seems to be a long way out to get things done. Look at what has happened with, with DeFi in the last month. It rose and fell and is back again already. So if you're talking about like a 30 day uh, time period as opposed to over two, uh, two years, not for sure. However, I will say this, I will hedge my bet because I think one of those is likely to be the winner and they're going to be built on that. So if you are a Bitcoin maximalist, hey, God bless you, good luck. I just don't think that Bitcoin can do it all. <laughs> just, just one of those things that I think about. Anyhow, I will say lastly about, about this, if Ethereum does hit a trillion dollar market cap, which I think it definitely could, especially with what's going to go on, especially with 2021 coming up, especially with all the different industries and institutions and people coming in and all the track being laid. 
I think it could definitely do it. And if we do hit a trillion, you know what that means? Well, that means it could be $10,000 per coin, which is what I predicted, oh, probably about a year ago or so. And um, I think it's gonna happen. So let's take a look at the numbers. So if the current price is 10,000, Bop, 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 bop. And its circulating supply is, well, what is a circulating supply? Great question. Circulating supply right now is 112 million. And its market cap is 1.1 trillion. Ah, excuse me, it's all, only off about about 100 billion. So that's what I think could actually happen. Again, the reason is because everything's built on it. I don't know if it can sustain that because everything's slowing down and different issues with transactions per second. But if they can, if they can pull it off, Ethereum will be one of the big winners. However, the ones I just talked about could also be, I don't think it's just one platform to rule them all for DeFi. I think it's multiple platforms. I think you really have to look outside the box and see what's out there. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Let's move on. So lastly, before cue the day, crypto to bypass sanctions? Absolutely, said Venezuela. And this is a concerning trend. So I don't know if this is good for the US, but I know it's good for cryptocurrencies. So here's what's happening. During a speech, President Maduro said this, the anti-sanctions law is the first response to give new strength to the use of petro and other crypto, national and global and domestic and foreign trade, so that all cryptocurrencies of the world, state and private could be used. This is an important project that is under development. So if you don't know, Venezuela has a real big problem with hyperinflation. Their fiat is basically worthless. So what they did, Maduro did, is he created his own cryptocurrency called the petrodollar, and he airdropped it to all his citizens. Now, here's my question. I don't live in Venezuela. I have no Venezuelan friends. And I don't know exactly what is being used. Is it, is it Bitcoin? Is it tomato coin? Is it the petrodollar? What is going on over there? Or is it there, are they actually using fiat or some, some other type of um, unit besides that? So if you are from there or know anybody from there, please drop that in the comment section. I would love to hear what is actually going on. Moving down. So when I said this isn't good for the US, it's not good for the US because they can pretty much bypass sanctions just the way Russia and China are gonna do with cryptocurrencies. And I'll get in that in a second. But this was a study done by blockchain, uh, our blockchain and crypto analysis firm Chainalysis. And they found this, Venezuela, represented an excellent example of crypto adoption in developing countries and how citizens use it to mitigate economic instability. And uh, yeah, when you have hyperinflation, what are you going to do? Well, you could use something that has quantitative hardening, such as Bitcoin or I guess the petrodollar or some other type of cryptocurrency. So, But if you notice down here, the South American nation was ranked third in terms of global crypto adoption by the study as seen in the image below. So what do we got for the first through fourth? Ukraine, Russia, Venezuela and China. And why do you think that is? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because Russia has been trying to ditch the US dollar for I don't know how long because they're trying to get out of the reserve currency. And it's really important to do that because you can bypass all the sanctions. If you don't have to use the dollar and go, hey, let's just use Bitcoin. Let's just use the petrol. Let's just use whatever, potato foot. It doesn't matter. Whatever they can use to bypass that and they can communicate amongst themselves, so much the better. Now, is it going to be this cryptocurrency or is it going to be some type of crypto that their nations actually build or actually uh, create just like people have talked about the banks are going to create their own cryptocurrency i have no idea but i can tell you one thing uh, a lot of nations don't trust each other so if they're going to be able to say yeah russia we're going to use your central bank digital coin or china we're going to use yours it'd be interesting to see i don't know if the trust is there i think there has to be a trustless open decentralized platform and i don't know what that could be maybe you could help me in the comments section anyhow moving down to finish up on top of that brazil has also announced plans to launch a central bank digital coin soon which along with the venezuelan crypto could further drive the adoption of crypto in the latin american regions there's my final thoughts uh this is going to happen this is going to happen and it's going to hyper accelerate especially with all the different economic problems globally now the United States had an opportunity to be the leader and show exactly what we were all about and say, hey, we're going to take the bull by the horns. These are the types of cryptocurrencies that we're going to use. This is what we're going to actually implement. And we're going to do these things in a global manner. However, we can't even get a debate right. So uh, it's a lot of problems right now. I don't think anybody's going to step up. Maybe it could be, who knows, Russia and China going, you know what? Crypto is the, the best way out. Anyhow, I'll get off my soapbox and let's jump in for a cue of the day. I got an interesting uh, segment about what could be a potential scam. So let's jump right in. All right, man, welcome back to the office uh, for a cue of the day. And this was a pretty, it was pretty interesting. Uh, this is, I got this in a message on Twitter. This is from uh, Jay Rowe. Uh, that's what uh, his, the handle was, but 
It's a pretty good question, and uh, this is what's going on. It says, hello, Dan. First of all, thanks for all the wonderful content. No problem. Thanks for watching. And uh, he goes, I, have a, I think I have a question for the day. Today, I realized that I and some other people I know received valueless tokens on our trust wallet. First of all, I have no idea. I mean, trust wallet, I hear about it in the uh, comment section. People say I should check it out. On top of the 30 wallets, I just haven't got around to it. Anyhow, he says, I received 360 app or D-A-P-P, -P, uh, Hot Love, H-L, Yi Yu Bao, or Y-Y-B, Jun Jemi, Y-J-M, and Che Guevara, or Che. But I could not find anything online about these tokens. On Etherscan, I did see that at least Hot Love has been around for 800 some odd days. What befuddled, that's a good word, befuddled, uh, me even more was that none of these tokens show a transaction history uh, in my wallet. So. He's like, what's going on? Is this a scam? So I'm always going to tell you the same thing, really. Uh, first of all, everything's a scam until proven otherwise. And that's what I've always uh, pretty much lived by. And it seemed to work out okay so far. So for this one, I, uh, I reached out to him. I said, my man, I go, what it could be is that maybe this is one of those airdrops that you get. Like I own EOS and uh, in, in EOS, you get all these crazy airdrops. You don't even know what the heck they are. And of course, they're not really valuable uh, whatsoever, which is one of the things that sucks about EOS. But they, you know, maybe it, it'll change in time. I don't know. Um, so you'll, you know, I said, maybe it's something like that. And then he wrote back to me and he says, you know what? Um, the only thing that I actually have in there is uh, uh, VeChain and VThor. So that can't be it. There's no airdrops for that. So, okay. So um, I said, well, maybe that's it. And then I remember another type of scam that was going on uh, not too long ago. It was for XRP holders. And they were getting the same type of thing of these little uh, insignificant transactions or tokens. And they would click on that and it would leave different problems. And, uh, you know, it was another scam type of effort. So not to be uh, undone, I actually reached out to the people that I know which are way smarter than me. One of those is Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos, and the other one is uh, Hashoshi. So uh, reach out to Digital Dave. I said, hey man, what's, I don't know what this is, so you know, help me out. He says, uh, he goes, hey Dan, I am miffed, or hey Rob, I'm miffed that I didn't get any hot love or anything else. Nothing to worry about. They're probably all just ERC20 tokens that people can send to anyone with an ETH address, maybe no transaction, transaction history, because the trust wallet doesn't officially support these, or maybe the history will show up later. Atomic wallet is sometimes tardy. And of course, we're talking about trust. But So that's, that, was, that was Dave's thing. So I want to say thanks, Dave, for you know, reaching out. On your busy schedule of hanging around Thailand, doing absolutely nothing, uh, just you know, putting out great content. Anyhow, so that was, uh, that was Digital Dave. And then Hashoshi, if you don't know, uh, I mean, I've talked about Crazy for Cryptos a lot on my, on my channel. I like what he does, dollar cost average guy. So, you know. He's, He's in, my, he's in my club of, of, of thinking. Uh, Hashoshi, he, me and him were on a, on a show called Be Crypto, and he's actually a developer. So when I want to know things, you know, development side, I'll go to Hashoshi. And as you can see on my channel, I reach out to people uh, because I need people around me who are smarter. It works really well in business. Uh, I just grab smart people, and that's usually how it works. Uh, so like on one of the Q of the days not too long ago, um, I had actually uh, reached out to uh, Sheehan Chandrasekhara, who is a CPA. I reached out to, um, when I have like institution questions, I reached out to Alex Maschioli. And uh, it's just kind of like how I do things. So for this one, for Hashoshi, I said, hey man, the same thing. Well, so, so what do you got? And Hashoshi, thankfully, gave me a little, little shout. He says, hey, uh, hey Dan, sorry for the delay here. Crazy, crazy times for me right now. Probably so because his channel's blowing up. It's got a really good channel, got a lot of great content, so you guys should check that out. He says, in regards to this, likely these are airdrops that occur for tokens he or she once had in the wallet. For example, if you have ETH in your wallet, when the snapshot occurs for a global airdrop, even if you move it out afterwards, you still get your airdrop tokens. And that's right. I was like, that's right, I forgot about that. So snapshots are important. Make sure you have it in your, in your wallet at that point. Same thing's gonna be coming up for the XRP snapshot for uh, Flare. Uh, spark so make sure you have it in your celsius wallet which is what i have uh, anyhow he says or if you use your address on certain erc contracts or etc there are bots that scrape addresses from them and send these nonsense tokens to you without permission uh, and then he got back to the later he says hey uh, there's others having reported the same it's all a bunch of bs tokens 
And I said, hey, thanks, man. So I didn't know. So again, it's one of those, one of those things where like, if you think it's a little bit you know, odd or too good to be true and you think it's a scam, it's probably a scam. And that's usually what it is. So again, uh, thanks so much to Digital Dave, Crazy for Cryptos, and Ashoshi for helping me out. I really appreciate it. And that is the uh, solve the mystery of what the heck's going on uh, with my trust wallet. All right, let's jump back. And that's it for today. So uh, hopefully that answered that question. Uh, could be something big, could not be, but I just wanted to cover it. And lastly, I just want to tell you that I've got a second channel. It's called Digital Asset News Clips, and I made it for two reasons. First of all, it's because sometimes I get a little, little loquacious, I get a little bit too wordy, and some of the videos go a little bit long. So what I try to do is save everybody time, break them up into segments. Instead of having it for 30 minutes, we'll do like 10 minutes and two minutes and five and whatever else, because time is money. And uh, also on that channel, I do what's called uh, Dan Clips Exclusives, where I just make a couple or one or two different videos that are just exclusive to that channel. And the second reason why I did it is because I don't want YouTube to come in and go, hey, Dan, thanks for all your hard work. We're shutting your channel down. So I just wanted to back up. So two reasons. So if you could uh, find your heart, uh, go over there and just uh, give it a subscribe, watch some videos. That'd be fantastic. I really appreciate it. Also, if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two months going to pop up on your left and right, not for sure. YouTube controls all that stuff. And uh, you can check those out. So again, thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. Super appreciate it. See you on the next one.